Hey guys, welcome to this video. Will Sebastian here, Pro Multi Asset Day Trader. Don't forget, if you want to learn to trade underneath, it's right there. So, uh, pound dollar, where are we sitting? Well, we looked at this previously. I did a short analysis on it. Um, this morning, mostly, if you look across your dollar pairs, uh, pre NFP um, and post um, July the 4th, and before that, uh, Powell comments, really regarding a little bit more of a safer um, or a softer landing, if you like. Um, you've got dollar weakness there on euro, dollar weakness on pound dollar, um, US dollar CAD weakness again. You're really seeing as we go into Friday and close out the week, a lot of dollar weakness there. And it's all trickling in along. So that just basically comes because the data as of late and the rhetoric as of late pre-election <laughs> comes in and, um, you know, says a lot for, for the easing case. So that's why you're getting that. Now, it has to be said, however, a lot of uh, pairs, well, especially the pound dollar and the euro dollar, are not a million miles away from easing themselves. Okay, And it's just because that new sentiment is coming in now, um, which is pushing it up so rapidly off from these falls. Because when you fell down here, for example, um, the belief really was that it, you know, there, was, there was a lot of US dollar strength remaining. And that's just not been the case. So... The overall trajectory, which we can actually see on um, on the pound dollar, for example, if you flick onto your weekly, okay, you know, it's been relatively sideways. For the most part, it's stuck between this, okay, and that. If you took an average, you know, it'd be more like this. There, there hasn't been a huge deviation in demand for the pound um, or, or short side buyers for the pound against the US dollar effectively. What is interesting is that instead of coming all the way down here on a fall, okay, you're, you've come about halfway, just like you did along here. And that's because you've got a lot of um, uh, support levels around here, a lot of rejection at that point. So that's been uh, uh, met with this long side bias and you've had several candles up all green. Now those green candles are bringing us to um, to previous levels where we've seen short side action. You can see a very tentative fall on the pound dollar with this high there and then this one. And now what's happening is you're coming into this area of short side bias, okay, like that. So between here is a little bit of an ambiguous no man's land, if you like, but I like it short around here. Okay, in this area, because like I said, you've had various areas of rejection here and it would suit the overall downtrend, uh, well, near term downtrend trajectory that is forming. And that's happening because, like I said, there is no real bias for pounds over US dollars. Um, that's more or less why after you fell from here, okay, you then come all the way back up. Now, this retracement is so high. Okay, because there isn't a massive deviation, like I said. This is probably over your 88.6. Okay, the kill zone really is around here. If you look at your latest pullback and retracement, okay, like this, you can see we're coming up to the 78.6. So I would say anything around here off the back of this massive uh, up move, okay, on pound, we uh, pound strength, dollar weakness, this is going to be a good place to, to start to look short for your next entry. Um, if you do end up falling, because we do have NFP news soon, okay, if you end up falling, I would probably hold off any longs or significant longs, let's say, until you come back around here. All right. So that's going to be your weekly key support, pretty much where you rose from before. I don't think it's redundant. Okay. And I think you may see um, some kind of kickback. So essentially, in this case, because there's no, you know, extreme dollar weakness, there is dollar weakness, and it is pushing up a lot. But is it is it enough really versus the pound, who's on a similar trajectory somewhat? Is it enough to bring it up here? I'm not too convinced. I would say that if it does become the case that you, um, you know, you break these highs, let's say like that. I would only consider reshorting up there because my trade plan effectively is going to be redundant if we we break this high. 
Okay, and at that point, you would probably see some real sentiment for, you know, perhaps the Bank of England being more hawkish um, or, or the, um, the Fed being more dovish. Now, you haven't got to this point of about 131 roughly since, you know, all the way back in September, about a year ago. So very long time. And again, like I said, it's within good reason. It's because for the last period of sideways movement, let's say since um, autumn going into winter 2023, um, you haven't had a big deviation in the sentiment bias for, um, for the pound against the US dollar. And I think that remains. Okay, so anything up here, like I said, I'm really going in line with market probability and what I can see here, which is various candle whips. This is going to give me a good guide and a good indication of where I would rather short. Now, it is the case that you're seeing extreme momentum um, as we come into this session before you get any um, NFP news out. So I wouldn't be shocked if you trickle in here. And for that reason, I would probably like to see on a one hour chart something considerable, some kind of reasonable candle to come out and give me an idea that perhaps short side biases are coming in. Um, so that would be about 1282. So slightly higher. I think you've got a little bit further to run. But my bias overall uh, on the pound dollar is, is short just because, you know, number one, you've got key technical levels, which are really easy to label in this instance. OK, you can see that right here. OK. So you've obviously had a lot of kickback at this point several times. So it tells me, OK, well, short side traders might like this. And like I said, I'm, I'm fully aware of the macro case or, or the, the simple sentiment bias that tells me there isn't a massive reason for pounds to be so much stronger than US dollars. Anything above this, and I just space my shorts out way, way up till about 131. So a good, good spacing, maybe about 300 pips or so. I don't want to bunch my entries up. I don't want to have everything in one shot. I don't want to shove loads and loads of pound short orders um, because I know it's just going to accumulate drawdown really, really quickly and I'm not really keen on it. Like I said, anything to the long side, I would really like to see it back at key long levels, of which you're just not at yet. Okay, so that's going to exist around here. You can just see it's a, it's a really good flip zone. You've had so many instances across the board where you have bounced from this level, either up or down, depending on it being support or resistance at the time. Very contentious. And that's what made it a very good long level as well um, for that reason. It's just all about probability and risk in the market, of which you need to master. Um, like I said, I, I'm going to teach that as we go into NFP in about half an hour. Um, if you want to learn for free, go underneath this video. It's right there. See you in the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.